So it's, at the moment, this room shown as a bathroom is a bedroom. And this room here, number five, which is shown as bedroom number five, is currently a bathroom. So we, we did ask them to switch them over because this window here, which is, which is a clear window, it's not obscurely glazed, uh, directly overlooks the uh, gable of the adjoining property, which is only two metres away. Um, so it, it was our view that the outlook for this room as a bedroom um, would be significantly substandard facing onto a, um, a, a blank gable. And we felt that the, the window here, which overlooks the backyard and, and properties to the rear, provided for better outlook um, um, in, in that regard. Um, so it was a on-balance um, view, really, Neither room is particularly large, but because of the outlook issue, we felt that outlook from this room was better than that room, given that it would be uh, occupied as a bedroom. Okay, uh, so square feet and it doesn't comply with the Housing Act 
you know, to continue to, you know, to actually, but I don't want members thinking that, you know, every time there's a HMO on the agenda, I would hear again talking about substandard accommodation because it's an HMO. You know, it, it's me talking about substandard accommodation because it's substandard and it doesn't comply with the law. Now, why on earth, you know, I've got to ask a question in this session, why on earth, when it came to the hands of officers, did they not feed that? Actually, inside of these two bedrooms doesn't comply with the house and things like that, and would actually be substandard. Why are we in that council? Why are we have to it'd be like find out after ourselves by you know, going online and measuring the rooms uh, or asking for the rooms to be measured because the, the, the measurements themselves you can see from bedroom eight, the measurements themselves are deleted on the, uh, on the, on the, uh, on the plan or, or seven or five or five. Why? Why? Is it the members that say it's substantive and never the houses of ours? Okay, thank you, Sue. Denise, you want to say something? Once again, Chair, I will be moving from the shoes of ours. Are you at the site? I was at the site visit. I just couldn't believe the, the tiny rooms. And, you know, obviously, the lady did say it's only going to be temporary on the weekend from Friday to Monday. But five and eight, they were just too small. You're only talking a single bed and probably nothing else, maybe television on the wall maybe and as Matthew said we could not police this as a council we couldn't even if, if it was one of the stipulations that we made we could not police that ever um, so I will be moving if, has everybody finished speaking and I will move do you want to speak Paul? Okay. I, don't, I don't want to actually make any comment but I think Councillor Kelly made an important point in relation to why is it left up to members to make these observations and not housing officers? And why aren't the observation of housing officers included in these reports? So I wondered if officers could comment on that. Uh, through you, Chair, we assess applications on, on, on land use planning issues. We assess them under the Planning Acts, not the Housing Acts. Uh, we consult our colleagues elsewhere in Council, and if comments are provided back to us, we would report them in, in, in the report for members uh, for members information. So I can't comment on on why um, housing officers haven't made any representation on this application. If I could just add through through the chair to what Matthew said, I mean um, I'm, I'm conscious from I think the last few planning committees there's been a number of applications like this and similar issues have been faced by members. Um, what I will do is I'll, I'll speak um, to Ian Platt, who is the head of housing and responsible uh, for these matters, and we'll have some internal discussions on this because it, it seems to be, uh, to me anyway, a, a recurring theme. Um, there are clearly issues here that I, I think we need to look at uh, and, and address um, maybe more comprehensively from a housing perspective uh, that Denny is currently doing. So. I will um, have those discussions and then if I may I'll come back to members of the planning committee um, with an update uh, report on that and how those issues are going to be looked at in the future, if, if that helps. Thank you. Uh, Stu, did you want to make another point? I'd certainly welcome that. Um, what uh, David Ball said, but uh, I'd also say, you know, in terms of the planning acts, uh, on two previous occasions, the view of members has been upheld by the planning inspectors as we speak with the sit on the matter. So they would consider it um, substantive accommodation to the planning expedition. And, and if, if uh, this is all to carry out the, the discussions with the previous planning team, that's a step in the right direction and they've got this situation. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm going to move on to the next item.
sorry, not, not to hold this, but um, <laughs> just in response to Councillor Lily's comment, you might find people putting in planning applications, but I think generally it's the role and responsibility of officers across the council, whether it's planning, housing, and whatever, whatever the service happens to be, uh, to try and ensure that all the decisions that we recommend to members are fully and comprehensively looked at in all their various aspects. So, um, thank you for the defence of officers, but I think, um, you know, for housing, I think there are some issues here that we do need to look at, and I've uh, given commitment to do that. Thank you. Okay, Right, I move refusal, Chair, on, uh, on the grounds that the development as proposed will, will create an over-intensive use of the property by creating eight bedrooms, two of which bedrooms, five and eight, specifically would result in a standard of accommodation that the Council considers would be substandard. As such, the proposal conflict with the principles of the National Planning Policy Framework, which seeks to secure high-quality accommodation and a good standard of amenity for all for all future occupants of the land and the buildings. Thank you, Chair. Well, oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, we've received a proposal from Council Council Wheelie and we've had a seconder. Uh, can we move this to the vote please the recommendation to refuse the application? All those in favour? towards the front of the driveway and has been significantly amended to minimise its impact in terms of scale and appearance. The overall length of the pergola has been reduced from 10 metres to 5 metres and the height has been reduced from 4.7 metres to 3.25 metres, removing the originally proposed ridge roof to a flat one following the design of the pergola already erected. The raising of the land levels and the positioning of the boundary fence is not considered to impact on the amenities of adjoining properties. The nearest dwelling is some 16 metres away from, uh, from these works. With the amendments secured, taken together with the distances from dwellings and any habitable rooms of adjoining properties, the developments are considered to be acceptable. The land levels drop down from Claremont Road and, consider and considerable boundary screening by mature planting further against these developments from view. The application was removed from delegation by Councillor Leah Fraser for the reasons outlined on page 28 of the report. Uh, there is no qualified petition of objection. Okay, would the board council like to speak? Presently, the 
driveway into the house is surrounded by trees, large bushes and shrubs. I'd like the committee to imagine what it looks like during the winter, seven or eight months of the year, when those trees, bushes and shrubs are bare. I know that's quite a difficult thing to do in this weather, but um, if you can just imagine that there's no um, foliage at all. Um, during that time of the year, the winter months, the proposed foliage will be in full view of those who overlook the structure. The application before you has already been scaled down, as Matthew explained, from the original plans. Originally, the structure was much higher, with an apex type roof, more along the lines of the garage. However, it's been scaled down to the present measurements. In a minute, I'm going to pass around a photograph where the measurements from the plans have been scaled onto a photograph to get an approximate idea of the impact of the original structure. Now, when this was done, um, it was with the original measurements that were put in, so we've got an apex type roof on top. So I've put a blue line where it goes up to and lines across to ignore the top. So I'm just going to pass these photos around. Also, this uh, photograph was taken in spring, uh, just when the sort of leaves are coming out. So it just shows you how bare it can be to the people um, behind the driveway. So I'll just pass those around. Uh, 
know, there is a difference in land levels across the site. Members who were present on the site, as you can see, that there was a difference in land levels. The one that's adjacent to the house is lower. It's not as high as this. Um, and and when, when you view it from the properties on the oval, it's, it's less intrusive, I guess, because it's seen against the backdrop of, of, the, uh, of the dwelling. Um, this, this one, uh, and that, that's the one that's in place, so that's the one that's uh, being applied for retrospectively. This one is higher um, and, and is seen um, without the backdrop of, of any building behind it. Behind it. But, but as you rightly say, they, they have made some amendments to reduce the, the scale of it, both in length and height as well. And, and we, can consider, we consider with those changes that it's, it's now uh, acceptable. Okay, we're now going to revert back to order of the agenda. So the next item is item five, which is pages 13 to 20. Permission is sought for the demolition of the existing dwelling and the erection of two dormer style dwellings in its place. 
A mix of property types can be found in the area, including bungalows, dormer bungalows, and traditional modern two-story dwellings. There is no prevailing house type that could define the character of the area. The proposals have been amended, and the design altered to take account of the site's surroundings and relationship with adjacent properties. The proposed dwellings relate well to their surroundings, and the development, if approved, would not result in overshadowing or loss of privacy, and the character of the area would not be harmed. Separation distances achieved ensure privacy is maintained. The proposals are therefore considered acceptable, complying with policy HS4 on new housing development, and are recommended for approval. There is no petition of objection to this application. Is there a ward council that would like to speak? Thank you for that. Um, I think we'll find that there is a condition linked to this. I'll ask the officer to uh, respond to that. Uh, thank you, through you, Chair. Uh, those members who were present at the site visit on Monday, they would have seen that there is um, significant vegetation on the site. Uh, I think the applicant had indicated a large tree in this corner. It was a large oak tree. Um, is to be retained. But a lot of the, um, the, the lot of the of the remaining vegetation on that, on that site is sort of self-seeded scrub that has been allowed to grow um, over over a period of time and doesn't really carry any significant amenity value. Um, so there is a condition. It's condition number seven on um, on, on the agenda uh, on the on the uh, application. It's on page seventeen. Uh, that requires uh, details of a landscaping scheme to be submitted um, uh, for further approval, which would look to secure uh, an adequate um, provision of landscaping on the site, uh, both for retention of some, some uh, mature uh, landscaping that's already present, but largely to remove it and replace it with, with, uh, with new landscaping. And then condition eight follows on from that, uh, which effectively ensures that anything that, that dies um, over a period of, of time uh, is, 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 uh, is replaced to, uh, to maintain that, that screening and that, that landscaping into the future. Um, if we can just start the committee, Denise, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I went in the house, it was gorgeous. Um, <laughs> it was a beautiful walk and, and the house was gorgeous, but obviously it needs to be dragged in. But I mean, even locally, the amount of houses around, it was, it was so diverse that there is no final grounds to review this application. I think. So if anybody else wants to speak on the for approval, I'll just recommend it. But unless the A, no, we can't. Sorry, somebody else will have to.
Well, I was just going to point out um, condition seven, and just to, I don't know if the residents here have read it, um, the wording exactly is on the right, any three of the removed dying will be incurred in damage or becoming seriously diseased in five years from the 